The word is a lamp on my feet and a light on my ways. Amen. Psalms 119, verse 105. Happy Sabbath, church. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Amen. This morning, it is an honor and a privilege to share the word of God with you. I will do as prescribed on Matthew chapter 8, verse 29. Go make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The book of Isaiah is classified among the prophetic book. According to the Hebrew lexicon, Hiushayu is the translation for Isaiah. It means God saves. The topic of my sermon this morning will be as follows, I will go. Without further ado, I'm asking the church to please stand for the reading of the word. Mm. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. You may now sit. The main idea in this text is the calling of Isaiah to be a messenger for God. Do you guys know it is a must for us to preach the word of God as Christians? It seems surprising that the events of chapter 6 are reported where they are rather than at the beginning of the book. The first verse of chapter 1 speaks Isaiah's vision. It would seem appropriate for Isaiah's call to be reported in chapter 1 instead of chapter 6. Isaiah has spoken, confessing his guilt. Now God speaks, addressing the heavenly council, the seraphim, and whatever angelic high must be present. The throne, of, the throne room of God is policy of the room government. There is business to conduct. God asks, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Isaiah is only by standard overhearing God's question. God says neither where the envoy is to go and what the envoy is to do, nor God, at, nor God asks, Isaiah volunteered. Here, I am, here am I, send me. Isaiah is caught in the excitement of the moment, grateful to be cleansed, and even more grateful to be alive, volunteers to be God's envoy, and even though he does not know where the Lord will ask him to go, or what God will ask him to go, or what God will ask him to do. In a sense, Isaiah writes to God a bank check, offering to go anywhere to do whatever for you, Lord. It appears there is a parallel between God dealing with his people and his earlier dealings with the people of Israel in the, in the wilderness. In, early, in an earlier situation, God dealt with their sin by forcing them to wander in the wilderness until they all died. As God gives Isaiah charge, it seems obvious that he already decided. God speaks to us for, for meaning and purpose in our lives by calling us to do God's work in the world. Here, I will emphasize on the word vocare in Latin, which means calling. Our calling is, is our vocation. The work of God calls us, what's your purpose? What is our calling? Remember, God invites us to reflect on our calling and vocation. To do so, we need to listen and we need to discern where God is sending us. Remember, our daily lives as God called gives us purpose and meaning. It is important to walk by the Spirit, according to Galatians 5, verse 16. I would advise you to use our GPS as Christians, which is the Holy Spirit. How many missionaries do you have this morning? We are living in a world which the business are pushing to buy more from advertising. On the other hand, most of us does, does not read our Bible daily. We open the Bible every Saturday. We are the church. The building is a place of worship. How do you guys behave at home, at work, or even at church? How many, how many of you listen to your parents? If so, raise your hand. In, in, one, of the in, sorry. in one of the gospel, the Christian is called to be an ambassador. The ambassador represents his or her country proudly and with dignity. How many of you are an ambassador for Christ? If so, raise your hand. 
As an ambassador for Christ, we must represent God proudly. Moreover, we must in a good way be a true ambassador for Christ. The world is at a period of trouble. We need to share the gospel with our peers. God is calling you this morning to do his work. And I would, I would like you to ask each person to invite someone next Saturday. Stop wasting your time in church. Therefore, it is important to know when you come to church, you come to worship God and to have a meeting with him. There are many things that must be changed. This is not the time to continue the gossiping. Stop gossiping. Stop getting into people's business. Get busy in the work of God. This is the time to wake up. The church is sleeping spiritually. Go on your knees, pray, to, pray God, and he will get you back on track. The end of time is near. Jesus is coming back. This is the time to wake up church. Wake up that you have been sleeping spiritually. God has a load of work for you to do in the work of God. According to Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38, the harvest is plentiful and the labor few. God is calling you at this time. Listen to his voice. He needs, he needs you to go. Are you available? Are you ready? Let's go and preach the gospel. The world is suffering because they need the bread of life. Remember, we need to start preaching at our homes. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Starting from today, I'm asking you guys to get to work, to do great commission prescribed by God in the Bible. Examine ourselves to see if we are in the right path. Church, the end is near. We need to get to work before it's too late. Get ready, pray God. He's waiting for you. He counts in each and every one of you. May God bless you all.